the efforts made by the Jewish underground they began at the end of 1940. There were some faint hopes, very faint hopes, until the middle of 1940 that possibilities did exist to escape, evade the German occupation, go to Italy, and thence to Palestine. But this stopped. And we prepared, we began preparing. We did not really believe that there would be such opportunities for Jews, but nevertheless, we began preparing. We hoped that as young people could manage. There were notables whom we had in mind. So we started preparing illegal contacts for reaching Palestine. We did not want to open these borders as long as we did not have contacts with representatives from Palestine who were in neutral countries or unoccupied countries. After we obtained information that they were aware of our efforts, we found a way to go into Slovakia. We had three main stops along the way inside the government general. They were Krakow, Tarnow, and Novi Sonj. There we concentrated young people from all the Zionist movements, from the government general, as well as from the areas annexed to the Reich, Reich, Silesia, and Zablonia. From the Slovakian side, we crossed the border at Bardiev, and after the first envoy, Shlomo Zigelnik, managed to cross the border and gave us the appointed sign, we began transferring people along that clandestine route. You were seeking for contact with neutral countries yes. to Geneva yes. and other that places. Is true. To Turkey. Into Turkey as well with the rescue commission. Other countries in Europe too. I think there was also an envoy in one of the Balkan countries. This is important because we are about to submit documents caught by the Gestapo from the... Uh, I merely want to add that part of these people managed to come get to this country, to Palestine. Another part was captured and res returned to Slovakia, and from there they were deported to Poland and murdered there. You and the uh, Aryan papers walked about freely in Poland. Yes, frequently. What did you see everywhere in Poland? I had, uh, it wasn't too often when I went on these missions, but once I spent about one month throughout Poland in the big cities and small towns as well. You had forged Aryan papers. I had very dubious papers then. There was one home in Warsaw, a ruined home. Miraculously, we had a stamp. It was on the one, hand, one side it had my picture, on the other side it had a certificate that my name was Antoni Luczynski. And then when I could no longer use that certificate, I had to use other names and other documents. Your name in the underground was Antek. That was the internal name which I had. Towards the Germans, I used other names. What did you see from time to time? I traveled through Lublin. I passed Zamosh, where Yudlamit Peretz, the author, had lived, the town of Kelch. I think that in one of those journeys, I passed through about 20 towns, and I met the Jewish conditions, the miserable Jewish conditions of life there. What did you see everywhere? It depended on the attitude of the local authorities. I had the distinct impression that in addition to the orders, the basic orders about uh, the general hostile attitude to the Jews, it also depended on local authorities. There were places, like for instance in Lublin, in the ghetto, the historical ancient Lublin ghetto. There were so many Jews there, these terrible fears which they experienced. The situation was much more serious there than in Lubyasha, for instance, a smaller town. The Jews there managed to uh, have trade and other kind of contact with the Poles. Therefore, I say this depended to a great extent uh, on local conditions, although everywhere, even where it was under the best conditions, it was still awful. 
What was the general impression? Humiliation, helplessness, depression. Economically, very often, uh, it was easier than in Warsaw, perhaps, because those smaller towns, uh, the villages were nearer. At times, uh, guards were not, the, was not as efficient. It was easier to get hold of food. It was easier to obtain food, perhaps, but all these settlements, they were living organisms. Each one was self-contained, split up. It was not a Jewish national organism where it had contacts between Warsaw and the other small towns as it had existed in the past.
הוא בא. Continue and remember that you are under. May I put the questions to you, Mr. Zuckerman, please? You remember the deportations. You, do you remember anything special regarding old men during those deportations? Yes, I do. What do you remember? During the days of deportations, beginning on the 22nd of July, what year? 1942, they used to, especially in the first period, the Germans used to take uh, out people weak people, elderly people during the classification, they would take them out of the line and kill them. And they had this explanation for it. And they said these people were not fit for work. And the impression, impression was created. The young people got the impression that those who are fit for work are indeed taken to, to work, to some labor camp. Yes. And then you organized this uh, Jewish fighting unit. The Jewish resistance organization was set up six days later on the 28th of July, 1942. And at the head, Mordechai Anilevich. N not yet then. Then there was a headquarters of four people, Shmuel Braslav, Yosef Kaplan, Tzivya Lubetkin, and myself. When did Mordechai Anilevich take over the command? He took over, it was in September. You were all without any military experience. Yes, on the whole. Most of us were people who had no previous military training. And in the meantime, you learned of the extermination camps. Yes, I'd heard about Treblinka for the first time during Passover 1942 without knowing really what it was, what it amounted to. Later, you learned what they really were. Yes, even during the very first days, perhaps on the first day, we knew precisely what Treblinka meant. And you informed the others? Yes, we published uh, announcements. We said, Aussiedlung, resettlement, means Treblinka, and Treblinka means death. And we called on the Jews to hide. In December 1942, and considering your position in this uh, resistance unit, the Jewish resistance, there was a special operation by the underground. Yes. Krakow, uh, Frank sat in Krakow, and the Jewish resistance unit uh, went to a cafe. Yes. yes, this and other operations. What happened to you there? I went out there in my capacity. I came to visit Krakow and Chestochov. I never reached Chestochov because I was stuck in Krakow. The purpose of my trip was really one. After the Jews of Krakow had been executed, there was a small, narrow ghetto left. The Jewish underground was known. And like in every society, there was an informer, a collaborator, who pointed out the heads of this underground. And there was no alternative left for those comrades but leave the ghetto and establish bases on the Aryan side. They carried out important tasks, very important groups they had, and tremendous leadership. Would you name a few names of these leaders? Answer, yes. There was Dolek Libeskin. There was Shimon Drenker. Who wrote the notebook Memories of Justina? Yes. That was Drenger's girlfriend when she was in jail in Krakow. 
and some time later. Well, there was a debate going on, and we did not agree that the Jewish resistance organization in Krakow should be placed outside of the ghetto. And we decided to return them by the means of various activities inside the ghetto to bring the Jewish resistance into the ghetto to make them leave the Aryan side and come back into the ghetto and I was sent there to plan this operation. Fortunately and perhaps unfortunately for them, well I don't regret that act action, I only regret the consequences, but those operations, it was just before Christmas 1942 when the population and the Germans prepared for Christmas. On that day when I came, I learned that on that very evening, three or four operations were scheduled. They were to attack a cafe with pistols and grenades, a cafe frequented by SS and Gestapo people. They did it. Yes, they did. They decided to attack this on the streets, to attack Gestapo people on the streets, disarm them. They decided to burn a garage, a military garage, and a fourth group was to have uh, distributed leaflets among the population. Will you uh, please make it short? Uh, this operation was carried out. It was carried out with tremendous exceptional success. But we did not know, myself and the other members of the headquarters, at that time, during the night, we decided to meet with the members of that basis who, during that very night, were captured by the Gestapo. Uh, do you remember the name Tenenbaum? Yes. Leibovich. Leibovich. I remember Leibovich. I was together with Leibman Leibovich. Both of us, we were captured by the Germans. I was wounded then, and I escaped. I wish to submit a document at this stage of the evidence, 1246, number of the prosecution documents. A notice sent by SS Gruppenführer Mir Miller in charge of the registration to uh, the commander of a certain district, informing him uh, that four Jewish bandits have been caught, Leibovich, Liebeskind, Tenenbaum, three, I apologize, who organized the operations carried out by the Jewish underground in Krakow. Uh, the Liebeskind, the widow, will come forward as witness this afternoon. Just a slight correction. This was sent to the Führer's office itself, and it came from the office of Heydrich, who was the superior of Eichmann. The court will see uh, that uh, confiscated arms are also mentioned. In Krakow as well, the command included all youth movements. It's difficult for me to say I didn't live there, but there were many, not just one movement. It was a, uh, it was a uh, like com Warsaw. complex movement. It was a smaller city than Warsaw. Uh, one must remember that in Warsaw, Warsaw had half a million Jews. Uh, we shall come to that to explain why in Warsaw, yes, and not in other towns. So, after uh, this December, you returned to Warsaw. Were you uh, fit? No. Were you well? No, I was seriously wounded. It was one day after the attack on the Germans in Krakow when I, accompanying Laban Leibovich, we entered the basis. It was a Jewish hospital, a deserted hospital, 
not far from the Gestapo windows. When we entered, we were permitted to enter, but we were no longer permitted to leave, and it transpired that on the preceding evening, the members of the resistance organization were captured by the Germans, and since Labman Leibovich was the first, we were ordered to stand, raise our hands, I threw myself at the door, I opened the door, but I fell down, I felt I was wounded, I was wounded in my leg, and it was lucky that I had boots on, and blood, flew, f blood was flowing into the boots. And then you recovered. After a few weeks, I recovered and I managed to reach Warsaw on my own. In the meantime, in Warsaw, some economic enterprises were organized where Jews were employed. Can you remember those yes, enterprises? There were, there were quite a few. There were numerous. There were four districts there. There was the uh, area of the brush workers, where they worked for the people. They made brushes for the army. Another area we call the <coughs> Trebenschulz area. There were German industrialists there, somebody called the Big Schulz, who must, and the smaller Schulz, who must have been less well-to-do, a man named Tebens, Hanman, and others. The Jews, did they trade? Well, no, their wages, they did not have wage, get wages, their wages was being permitted to stay alive. It was a ghetto which was a little removed, which was not part of this complex, and in addition there was that ghetto which they and ourselves called the central ghetto, the wild ghetto, or Mexico we called it. This was for those who did not work. Did you command the district of the Tebenschloss? Yes, workshops? starting starting in January 1943 until April. Did they have 22 groups of this uh, resistance yes, unit? Yes, all over the ghetto. Nine in the central ghetto, eight in the Tebenschulz area. Did you have contact with the underground in other towns, with Vilna in as that, well? In that period, it weakened a bit. The strong links which we had lasted really only until the end of 1942 or the beginning of 43. Subsequently, we resumed them much later. In Vilna, there was Abakovna. Abba Kovner came after Itzik. Commander of the uh, underground. Did you have contacts with the Polish underground? Yes, we did have ties with the Polish underground. With Amia Erdova and Krajowa. And who helped you? We obtained aid after actions which we took. Operations in August 1942, we burned houses, houses before we had weapons. We poured petrol and burned several homes. We didn't want Jewish property to fall into German hands. And we wanted these blazes to alert the world to the fact that we are being massacred. And indeed, these flames were noticed by Soviet pilots flying over Warsaw. That night, we also tried to assassinate the commander of the police. Later, some of our friends from Kadavitska and Arie Vilner, they were on the Aryan side of Warsaw. They obtained grenades, pistols, they brought it into the ghetto, and we prepared for the final act. There was another Polish organization, yes. the NSZ. Where did this organization NSZ operate? Ek consisted of fascist elements in Poland and anyway on Jewish matters they did collaborate with the German occupiers that is they also, and they also killed, killed Jews. Jews yes they killed the Jews Thank 
Tell us about the operation of January 1943. Yes. On the 18th of January 1943, the poet Yitzhak Atzenelson was visiting then and he was about to return to his home. When he left in the morning, he came back with his only remaining son and said, Everything is lost. We are surrounded and there are guards, heavy guards, reinforced guards are surrounding the ghetto and are penetrating inside. It was only a few months. There was only this brief period of uh, temporary calm which we used for organizing. And on that morning, I was then still wounded Together with my friends, in our group we had a base on Zamenhof Street 5658. The windows were facing the so-called Umschlagplatz. We saw it. It was a juncture, a road juncture. That's why we chose that place. Another place in Mila, Mordechai Anilevich was there with his group. There were other groups, but they were not armed. All our attempts to communicate with the other groups failed, and each commander in January and later in April too was really on his own. What happened in January, please? Well, it all began when they began penetrating. There were SS and Waffen SS. I know that certainly because there was a transport. There were people who were scheduled to, set, to go to the front, but they were taken off the train, the soldiers, and brought to Warsaw. But they could not imagine that there was any attempt of Jewish resistance. All that was prepared during these brief months. And they surprised the group of Mordechai Anilevich that morning, but they did manage to hide the few arms which they had and permitted themselves to be taken away, and they took a solemn oath not to reach the Umschlagplatz. I think this was common to many young people, and they did not reach that Umschlagplatz. They either fell or managed to escape. When they reached Damenhof, and we saw that from afar, we saw that our friends are being led in a big group of Jews. They are being surrounded by Germans towards that Umschlagplatz. We were dazed. It was a very important group. We had counted on it. But apparently they knew what they were doing. We could not start shooting because we would have hit only Jews. Certainly we could not have thrown grenades. But Mordechai Anilevich gave the sign and all the members in those rows shot at the Germans through grenades. There was tremendous chaos. The Germans scattered. The Jews, too, scattered in all directions, but eventually, uh, after all, these were soldiers, they regrouped. Were you also active at the time? No, we were far, we saw everything, but I learned something, I learned a lesson, something which I had really assumed. We learned the lesson which we applied in the April uprising, not to be dragged into street fighting. Only after we heard the explanations by Mordechai Anilevich. the whole action. Yes, we saw it, we saw the escape, we saw them disappear. We saw a house not very far from us, a wooden hut where three fighters hid and they were then murdered by the Germans. Mordechai Anilevich was saved after two or three days, returned to base, and it appeared that plain Jews saved him at the last moment. But he was one of the only ones who were saved. The other fighters fought to the last moment. It's not a phrase, to the last moment. And then we decided to adopt other tactics, partisan tactics, and fight in the homes. This underground. They had plans how to resist. There were yes. all kinds of uh, proposals. And uh, once uh, they planned to set fire to the whole ghetto no, and to be burnt that was, alive. That was in September 1942. Why did you not follow this plan? <coughs> it was a very dramatic evening. 
in the life of the underground, we s there were some of us there, young people, out of 120,000 Jews taken to death, or who were concentrated then, 60,000 were taken to the death camps. We were the fighters, the pioneers. We stayed behind. It was a shame for us. We were ashamed. So there were colleagues among us who said, who said, only a few days ago, our meager arms were captured by the Germans on the 3rd of September 1942, and two members of the headquarters died on that day, Shmuel Braslav and Yosef Pratman. And again, we had nothing, empty arms, and there were those who said the final act must be now carried out. Take the petrol, burn the ghetto, and go up in flames, all of us. Why didn't you do this? I was the man who opposed this plan. On that evening, I did not gain much honor, but I was insistent that if we did survive, there was no sense and no purpose to sell our lives so cheaply. If it is true, I said, that we shall gain a few weeks or perhaps a few days, we must take an oath and a pledge that nothing will be too difficult for us to obtain arms and fight. Let us go back to January. The operation in January, was there no echo on the German I think there was, side? I think there was big, a big echo especially among the Jews and even among the Poles. Our group, who was not captured, we fought in the houses for two days. And there was this situation, we were about 40 people and only a few were armed. Easily we could circulate in the houses, on the rooftops, and the Germans thought, they imagined that these were big groups, many groups, but we were only small units. We had quite a bit of arms, we disarmed Germans, we obtained grenades, rifles, it was very important, and the last thing which we obtained, we obtained faith that we can fight, we know how to fight. You found a way to reach through the sewerage to reach one another. It took a lot of time till we found that way. It was one of our mistakes, a tactical mistakes. For many weeks we had been burning bridges. We did not have maps. But finally you did find a way. Yes, we found a guide. Yes, a man who had all the plans, the maps of the canal network. And this later was your means of communication. On two occasions we took people out, once from the Tebenschulz area on the 29th of April or May 1st, and on the second occasion on the 10th of May on the mo in the morning from Prostow Street, we took fighters out you of the central ghetto. decided to spend the Passover of 43 outside yes, sir. the ghetto? I did, sir. You did not know that the operation would take place? I had place. spent six days on the Aryan side. I had no documents. I was alone. I was not used to living on the Aryan side. And I had nothing to prove my identity. I did not know what was happening in the ghetto. I agreed with our, our envoy, a 17-year-old girl, that on the morning of the 19th of April, she would get into the ghetto, contact a Jewish policeman, an underground man, and tell them that I was going to join a labor battalion. But on the 19th of April, she came back about 7 o'clock in the morning. She was weeping. Everything is lost, she said. And she says she was going to commit, she said she was going to commit suicide. The German SS entered the, ge the ghetto. Yes, they did. You were on the Aryan side and could not enter the ghetto. The ghetto was surrounded. Streets were blocked. What did you do on the other side of the ghetto when the ghetto was fighting? As I, as I explained, I was there only for six days. I had no money. It was, about, it was going to be sent. The money was going to be sent on. I had no contacts. This work was done by somebody else before, by Arya Vilner, who was our envoy. But he died. He was No, rather, he was captured in the course of an arms transaction. 
and we had no contact with the Polish underground for several months. One day they told us that if we wished, if they told us if we want to obtain aid on time, then somebody must come out to the Aryan side, and so I did, and it was my duty to look for contacts. I did find Dr. Adolf Berman, but his contacts was, were with parties and other organizations, rescue organizations, while I needed contacts, military contacts, really. Well, on the first day, we obtained 22 rifles. They were presented to Armia Ludova. How did you smuggle the guns into the ghetto? We could not send it to the ghetto, but we let them know that we have the rifles and we plan to send it in through what was called the Kartovtsis, those people who were worked as grave diggers in the cemetery. And because on the first days we did have some communication through these grave diggers, we thought this would be the best way to smuggle in the arms, perhaps in the coffins, but we did not succeed. You received a letter from Mordechai Anilevich. I did, sir. I now hand you Is this the original letter you received? It is not, sir. The original was written Hebrew. The original letter was in Hebrew, addressed to me. How did he smuggle that letter to you? Also through these grave diggers. And this is the answer to that letter which I have here. I translated it, it's my handwriting. I translated it into Yiddish for the benefit of those who did not read Hebrew. May I ask the court to uh, hear this letter? I uh, want to request the witness to read at least two passages. And I extracted one passage, a secret passage about arms, a very timely thing, and a second passage which was strictly private about Sivia, and this was did not concern the wide public. Dr. Berman translated it, he translated it into Polish, and it went over the underground radio station. What is Anilevich writing in that letter? This is T295 by the court. As far as I recall, do you want me to relate the contents? I want you to read from the beginning, He please. wrote in Hebrew, but this is the Yiddish translation. He said, he asked me to... The President of Court, you may read Yiddish. The witness is reading it in Yiddish. It will be translated from the Hebrew later into English. Die Deutschen seien in zwei Mal entlaufen vom Ghetto. Eine Gruppe hat uns gehalten für Position, die Machuk, eine Minute, eine Leute, die scheinbar doch nicht erkannt. Eine zweite Gruppe über sechs schon. Die Mine bei den Bärsten hat aufgerissen. Position vier Minuten, eine Leute. Nein, sie läuft vier, sie läuft vier. Aber ich bin doch nicht schaffen. Aber ich bin doch nicht schaffen. Aber ich bin doch nicht schaffen. Die Mine bei den Bärsten hat aufgerissen. Von unserer Seite ist beim Heindruck und Tod doch noch ein Korn. Die Chiel, was ist gefallen, war Gieber und ein Sellner beim Maschinengewehr. Und wenn wir haben sich noch nicht in der Wüste, die Chaveren von PPR, haben angegriffen, die Deutschen, als die Radiostatie ist wie, hat über die Gäste eine wunderbare Idee, wenn unser Selbstschutz, habe ich ein Gefühl von Ganzkeit. Trotz, es ist noch das auch Arbeit für uns, als das, was ist bis jetzt geschehen, ist gemacht geworden, schlimm ist dick. Die allgemeine Lage, alle Schotten im Ghetto und Chutz dem Ghetto sind geworden aufgelöst. Auch Chutz Werterfassung, Transavia und Dering. Keine Idee ist wegen Matze bei Schulz und Tebis, weiß ich nicht. Der Kontakt ist geworden übergerissen. Der Bergstarschop brennt schon dem dritten Tag. Kein Kontakt mit den Gruppen habe ich nicht. Im Ghetto sind da sechs Reifes. Nacht hat gebrannt das Spital. Ganze Blocken stehen in Feier. Die Polizei ist von anderen gelöst geworden. Auch Chutz Werterfassung. Schmerling ist wieder an uns geschwommen. Lichtenbäume hat man an uns gelassen von Umschlag. Kein Sach Menschen vom Ghetto hat man nicht an uns genommen. 
Anders ist am Arzt in die Schotten, und vor ihm habe ich nicht. Bei Tag sitzt man in die Behältnischen, und dann nimmt ich von Heintig und Norden, gehen wir rüber zur Partisanke. Heintig und Nacht gehen wir raus, drei Gruppen mit zwei Euro Zu einer Waffe von Viviat und der Rotterung von Gewerb. Sollst wissen, ein Revolver hat kein Wert nicht. Wir haben sich mit ihm nicht benutzt, wir laufen haben Granaten, Bixen, Maschinengewehr und neufreies Material. Ich kenne dir nicht, was schreiben die Bedingungen, in welches Leben die Eden. Nur aus der Welt wollen wir uns halten. Alle Übrigen wollen früher oder später umkommen. Der Gehörl ist ein Gehassmeter. Die Mathe in alle Schronen, in welchen unsere Gewehren haben sich uns behalten, hat mich bei Nacht gekannt, uns sind kein Licht, weil sie nicht stock in Luft. Von allen Gruppen in Ghetto fällt noch ein Mensch. Ich hier, das ist sicher nicht so. Ich weiß nicht, was mehr zu schreiben. Ich stelle sich vor, als eine Frage, ich bei dir noch eine Frage. Benugen sich aber heimlich und tot mit dem. Sei gesund, mein Teirer. Und öfter wollen wir sich noch sehen. Der Ricker, der Holen in mein Leben hat sich verwirklicht. Ein jüdischer Selbstschutz in Warschauer Ghetto, in seinem voller Pracht und Größkeit hat er gesehen. Ähm, Mordechai. What are the words in Polish? The Polish words, as far as I can recall, <coughs> that was written by Dr. Berman, who was on the Aryan side. Apparently, these were some markings for translating it for the radio. Uh, the court asks the witness to translate it into the Hebrew, and uh, the witness, the Attorney General, read the Hebrew translation, please. Twenty-third of April, nineteen hundred forty-three. Shalom Yitzchak. I do not know what to write. There will be no personal details to die today. I have only one expression to express my feelings and those of my friends. Something has happened which is above our wildest, boldest dreams. The Germans twice fled the ghetto. One company held out forty minutes and the other more than six hours. The mine, which was placed in the brush-making area, blew up. We had only one victim. He is Yechiel. He fell like a brave soldier near his machine gun. When we received news yesterday that members of the PPR had attacked the Germans and that the broadcasting station gave wonderful news about our self-defense, I had a feeling of perfection. There is much work to be done, but what has already been done has been done to perfection. Now the general situation, all the workshops inside and outside the ghetto are closed except for three. The situation in the Schulz area, about that I have no information, communications have been broken off. The brush-making shop is in fires, has been so for three days. I have no contact with the companies. There are many blazes and fires. The hospital is in flames. The police has been disbanded, except for the Werterfassung. Schmerling has again reappeared. Re uh, Lichtenbaum has been released. Not too many people have been taken out of the ghetto. I have no details. In the daytime we hide, at night, Today at night we are going to start a partisan system. Three companies will go out. They have two tasks, armed patrols and obtaining arms. Pistols. Pistols have no value. We n never use the pistols. We need grenades, rifles, machine guns and uh, dynamite. I cannot describe the conditions under which the Jews live. Only very few can hold out. All the others will die sooner or later. The die is cast. All the bunkers where our friends are hiding, one cannot light candles because there is not enough air. All the companies in the ghettos are missing only one man, Yechiel. That too is a victory. I don't know what else I can tell you. I imagine that there are many questions. 
but this will be enough for today. Shalom to you, my friend. Perhaps we shall see each other someday, but the dream of my life has come true. I've seen with my own eyes Jewish self-defense in all its splendor. Signed, Mem Mordechai. Yes. So you were on the Aryan side of Warsaw looking for ways and means to smuggle arms to have a new contact with a yes. fighting ghetto. until you discovered uh, the maps of the municipal sewerage and until you found a man alive who was a guy who was a sanitation department employee he knew all that canalization network of his own experience but uh, you could not smuggle arms anymore. No, we did not manage to smuggle in hardly any arms, but we kept up communications through the telephone and through envoys, runners who would be going back and forth. Please tell the court about your activities. After I received the news, we tried to see what could be done. After searches, I did obtain communications with Anya Krodova and Anya Ludkova. There were meetings, very difficult meetings, with representatives of that armia. I met one of the representatives of this armia, this organization. What did you request? I pled, I pleaded for arms. The man introduced himself as Karol. As I learned later on, he was a major. I think his name was Yanishevsky. I said, I told him that the ghetto is alone, and I request arms. And he said, the ghetto is a Bolshevist base. And I said, your information is wrong. I myself, I'm one of the commanders, I'm a member of the Hechalutz, the pioneer organization, and most of the groups are members of the pioneer movements, Zionist movements, and we do not ask Jews who they are when they come to join us and fight with us. All we want to know whether people are prepared to fight. I did not get arms, but the man offered uh, me, and this was on about the 21st or 20th of April, he proposed to remove the fighting men out of the ghetto. It was not my mission. My mission was to strengthen the spirit of the fighters, to get them arms. But I told him, I told the partisans to prepare hiding places in the forests and so on. Later I learned that this Polish man who guided me, Hajduk, during the Polish uprising in 1944, this man fell elsewhere in Warsaw. But at this time, he sent his friend Irena and said that Hajduk himself had killed this major. And it later turned out that this major was a Nazi collaborator. I found another attitude by the Armia Ludovna, the other group. I think it was on the very same day. They gave me 22 or 25 rifles. But I had no way of sending it into the ghetto, and they could not help me either. It later transpired that such a simple thing as a map of the canalization network did not exist or the Armia Ludova did not have it at that time. We, the Jewish company, had to become experts for this canalization network. And later, it was your duty to remove the remnants of the Jewish fighters. Yes, we tried repeatedly. Just as people reached us from the ghetto, so we several times tried to send our people into the ghetto, but they would they would lose their ways in this labyrinth. Sometimes they reached the Whistla River. They lost their way. They had no orientation. They did not know how to proceed in this maze until one day one of these runners, he was the chief runner later on, Simcha was his name, Rathazer, Rotem his name is today. He is alive. 
He undertook, uh, after several experiments and attempts, on the 8th of May he managed to enter the ghetto. But it was only a few hours after the chief bunker with Mordechai Anilevich inside and more than 100 fighters had fallen in the defense of the bunker. This man also met a delegation which had just then arrived. The desperate fighters had sent a delegation. They were sent back and when we had to use the last remaining hours of dark, at sunrise, everybody should again had to be inside the bunkers. And those for whom there was time were put into the bunkers. Three groups had remained in the ghetto. And I know from members of the Polish underground and workers who were employed there in the ghetto later, many months passed until the end of 1943. During all those months, still there were Jewish fighters all along. I don't know when the last Jewish fighter fell or how this happened. It went on for months. Yes, it went on for months. And after you evacuated the fighters, you organized again on the Aryan side and yes. reorganized the underground. That is true. You had pamphlets. I do have, have one it. of them in Polish. This is a leaflet of the Jewish National Committee published in 1944 on the second anniversary of the massacre of the Warsaw Jews on the 22nd of August. Will you please read in Hebrew the passage? Please translate into the Hebrew. In this long letter, the name of the pamphlet, A Voice Out of the Depths, De that is the name of the leaflet. Hitler did not obtain his objective and he cannot attain his objective. The Jewish people is alive. Out of 17 million, more than 5 million were extirpated. But the Jewish nation of 12 millions is fighting with renewed strength and vigor for its survival and for a better future. The masses of Jews all over the world are sh share together with us this tragedy. They suffer with us. They do all they can to alert humanity about our plight and about aid. With great enthusiasm, they fight to resurrect Jewish life and rejuvenate us economically and socially. Historical compensation, a single historical compensation, now can be found. After this bloodbath, after the rivers of Jewish blood that were spilled, an independent democratic Jewish state where the tortured Jewish nation will have unlimited opportunities to develop and for constructive this existence. The date of this pamphlet? That was on the Aryan side of the of Warsaw. Who wrote this? Notice. I think I composed the leaflets. Uh, Berman did the final formulating. Both of us wrote it, really. President of Court, will you please submit it? Attorney General, then at that time. I think you we were not wrong then million. about the five millions. President of Court, will you please attach the Hebrew translation? President of Court, this is T256. You also took part in the Polish I did, sir. Yes, I upheaval. Did. 